Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my presentation on separating mixtures. Now, before you watch this, um, let's make sure you're comfortable with the uh, basics of chemistry and the states of matter uh, videos. So watch those in the playlist if you don't uh, feel confident with that. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at solutions, filtration, crystallization, simple distillation, fractional distillation, chromatography, um, water treatment, and the core practical that goes with this unit. Now we're going to start off by looking at solutions, which are simple kinds of mixtures made of a solid dissolved in a liquid. The solid gets called the solute and the liquid gets called the solvent. Now when the substance is dissolved, this is what happens. Our lump of solid separates up into individual tiny particles that are spread evenly throughout the liquid. Now, different types of substances dissolve in different ways. So ionic compounds, for example, when they dissolve, and all of the individual red and pink ions with their opposite charges separate out into individual red and pink ions in the solution and everything is completely broken apart. But with simple molecular substances, for example, carbon dioxide, which we've got here, when they dissolve, the overall molecules stay together, but they just separate apart from each other. Um, so a really common misconception, some people think this is what happens and the actual molecules break up into individual atoms. That isn't what happens. The molecules stay complete like this, but they just separate apart from each other. OK, so now we're going to look at how we can separate mixtures. And the first technique we'll learn is filtration. Now, filtration is used to separate an insoluble solid from a liquid. This does not work on does not work with solutions containing dissolved substances. Now, this separates solutions based on differences in their solubility. So, insoluble solids get collected in the filter paper um, and they form what we call the residue, um, whilst liquids and any dissolved solids will pass through the filter paper and into the flask and we call them the filtrate. So the method for this really simple. Our mixture is poured through a filter paper, um, which is inside a funnel, and we cut the uh, the residue, so the solid that's collected, is then rinsed with distilled water to make sure anything contaminating it is removed. Now the way this works is our filter paper has lots of tiny little holes in it, so that liquids and any dissolved solids, those holes are big enough to let those particles travel through, whilst that also the holes are too small to allow larger particles of solid to travel through so they get trapped. Okay, so our next technique is crystallization, which is used to separate a solute that we want to collect away from the solution that we want to get rid of. So what happens here is that we separate things based on their boiling point. So the solvent has a low boiling point and it just boils away into the air whilst the solute has a high boiling point and it remains behind. Now, the way this works is we heat the solution in an evaporating basin, which is this kind of clay dish that you've probably used in the lab yourself. And we heat it until crystals begin to form on the surface. And then we leave it somewhere warm uh, until evaporation is fully complete. Now, we tend to heat it indirectly. So we have this beaker of boiling water and we use the steam from that to heat our, heat our evaporating basin. That means it will heat the solution without boiling it, which means that we don't lose any bits of solution uh, as it spits away when it's bubbling. The next method we need is called simple distillation. And this time, this separates the solvent from the solution. So it allows us to collect the solvent. Compare that to, to a crystallization where the solvent just boils away. Now, again, this uses differences in boiling points. So generally, our solvent has a lower boiling point and that boils off and is collected and our solute has a high boiling point and it remains behind and it works like this so we start with our solution boiling in a round bottom flask in this case we've got a solution of copper sulfate uh, dissolved in water now as that boils the water vapor boils first because the water's got a uh, lower boiling temperature and the water vapor passes through the apparatus into this equipment here which we call a condenser this is essentially a glass tube surrounded by another glass tube that has water in it and that gives the condenser a cold surface so what happens is our hot water vapor hits that cold surface and it condenses and then it's collected in the flask next up we have fractional distillation. Now this enables us to separate a mixture of two liquids. Again, it exploits differences in boiling point. And the idea is that the substance with the lowest boiling point boils first and is collected. 
and the substance with the highest boiling point um, remains behind. Now, the big difference between this and simple distillation is you have this fractionating column, um, and that's going to be important in a second. So we start off in the same way. We boil the solution in a round bottom flask. This might be, in this case, a mixture of water and ethanol. Now, in this case, ethanol boils at 78 degrees Celsius, where water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So the ethanol will boil first. And then what happens is the vapors get passed through this fractionating column. Now, although the ethanol boils first, there will still be small amounts of water vapor in that mixture. So the idea of the fractionating column is that it gives that any of that water vapor lots and lots of opportunities to condense. And so hopefully it means that by the time we get up to here, only ethanol vapor remains in our in our fumes and then again those ethanol vapors will hit the cold wall of the condenser where they'll condense back into a liquid and will collect pure ethanol over here whilst most of the water remains behind in the round bottom flask. Next up is paper chromatography which is used for separating mixtures of coloured substances and it works something like this so we have a solvent which we call the mobile phase and some paper which we call the stationary phase and in terms of our method what we do is we make these little sample spots of our colored substance on a pencil line and we suspend it in on, on the chromatography paper we suspend it in the solvent with the solvent below the level of that pencil line now over time the solvent will soak up our chromatography paper and drag the colored substances with it but because those substances have got different amounts of solubility in the solvent, some of them will go further and some of them less far. So we can see here how those individual black dots have separated out into all the different coloured substances that they're made from. Now, the number of dots tells you the number of different substances in your sample. And we can also do a calculation called RF um, in which we divide the total distance that the solvent moves by the individual distance that each one of the spots moves. And that gives us a number from one to zero. And that is unique for any combination of sample and solvent. So we can use it to identify particular substances. So this led to the separating mixtures called practical uh, in which we were investigating different colored inks. So we did it one way, one method we used was paper chromatography. So we drew a pencil line on a piece of paper. We made our sample spots and we suspended it in some water making sure the water didn't get above the line of our dots. And then we allowed the water to soak up the paper, um, separating the ink out into each of these different spots. And we, for each spot, we calculated the RF by measuring the distance the solvent travelled and the distance each spot travelled. And we used the RF calculation. RF equals the sample distance, um, the sample distance over the solvent distance. We also did simple distillation on our sample. We didn't use the full setup with the condenser because that's expensive and fiddly to use. So we kind of improvised the condenser by boiling our liquid in a conical flask, allowing the vapors to pass through a delivery tube into a, um, a, uh, a boiling tube placed in an ice bath, again, to provide that nice cold surface for condensation to take place. Okay, so the last part of this topic is water treatment. Now, water naturally is contaminated with all sorts of things like silt or sand and um, organic debris like leaves and twigs and dead insects and stuff and lots of microorganisms as well. Um, now, we want to make it potable, which means drinking water, and all these things uh, make water unpotable. So how do we make it potable? Well, in the UK, we have a three-step process that involves sedimentation, where we let the water settle so that stuff that's in it can sink to the bottom. Then we filter the water um, to remove smaller particles of, um, of matter. And lastly, we add chlorine, which will kill any microorganisms. Now, in arid countries where they don't have much fresh water, think things like desert countries in the Middle East and that kind of thing, um, in those countries, they do simple distillation of seawater. So they heat it up um, until it boils and cool the vapour to condense it back to pure water. Now this requires enormous amounts of energy, so it's only done when there's no fresh water to use as an alternative. That's it, that ends. As always, thanks for listening and well done if you got this far.